I took the roof off of the Hummer. Bro, we got the big box from Hoka. So big, I have to step back. Step back to get the whole thing in the frame. Man, we are going back into the Max Cushion. Gangland. <laughs> We're going back to the Max Cushion gangland. This morning, Hoka Sky Flow. This is a shoe that's been out for about a month now. We actually had a review go up on the Supwell app by my guy Nate P, Nate P, out in the UK. He's mostly a trail runner, but he copped the Sky Flow. And this is the thing. Some of the people who watch the videos every day, who love what we're doing on the channel, who are subscribed to the Supwell app, which is the best place to find deals on new and used running shoes and the best place to connect with hobby, other hobby joggers. Some of those people, the people who love what we do on the channel, they don't even wait for my reviews on the shoes. They just buy them. So part of me is just thinking, why should I even be reviewing these shoes? Because people are going to buy them either way. I had another guy, Jeff, he said he, he bought some shoe off Fleet Feet because they have 60-day return policy. I said, bro, Use my running warehouse link because they have a 90 day return policy. So I think I'm just here for the entertainment. I don't know. We got the Hoka Skyflow. You guys know I love the Max Cushion shoes. This is intending to be Hoka's newest upgraded technology entrant into this segment. That's getting really competitive. We've had some great shoes this year. Current top three, I'll get into in a second, but what we gotta get out of this box right here. And this is, you can tell, this is a heavy box. It's not just the Skyflow. We got some other, we got some other shoes in here. We need some bounce. We need some comfort and we need some versatility. If we can get those three things, maybe it can crack the top three, but this is a category Hoka pioneered. And the question today is, can they reclaim? Can they reclaim what's rightfully theirs in Max Cushion Gangland? That's a big box, brother. Gotta get the citronella in the frame. All right, so Hoka Skyflow, as I was saying, it's supposed to be a more modern version of something like the Bang, Hoka Clifton here, and the Hoka Bondi, because the Clifton and the Bondi use a foam called compression molded EVA. And if you take a look at this foam versus some of the other foams in the category, it's not as soft, it's not as bouncy, it's not as durable, and anecdotally walking around in the Clifton, nowhere near as comfortable when I'm thinking about that squish, that bounce, that pop that I love out of an MCG Max Cushion Gang shoe. I don't usually like acronyms, but you guys have adopted it. People are dropping the MCG for life, bro. MCG 4L. This does not have the typical comfort underfoot that I look for in a Max Cushion shoe. Now, the Clifton is not Hoka's Max Cushion shoe. The Bandai is, and we had the Bandai brothers walking around here the other day. My, my guy in the orange vest, he's a really nice guy. And people love the Bandai because the amount of stack and comfort and cushion underfoot just from having a lot of foam. But if we take a look at some of these more modern foams up here, Saucony's using Power Run PB, which is a Piba blend, a polyether block amide, a race foam. It's a little lighter, bouncier, softer, more resistant to cold weather. It's not going to get as firm in the winter. Brooks is using still a standard training foam, super critical EVA, but that super critical process makes it a little bit bouncier, makes it a little bit better for fast running and just a touch more compliant or squishier underfoot than something like the compression molded EVA. And then New Balance has an absolutely wild EVA blend in the fresh foam and the more V5. One of the softest yet weirdly bouncy foams. This is an awesome shoe, but I do have to say I keep gassing up the more V5. It's, it's like the Boston 12. When I gassed that shoe up, everyone just bought it and then they were upset. It didn't work for them. So do not buy the more V5 if you do not want a narrow toe box. It's a lot of people, a lot of people are saying, I really have to work on my impression. I can do a lot of impressions. I can't. I just can't nail that one. I 
can we, we got some time though maximum cush 2024 a lot of people are saying the toe box is too narrow even my own wife and the thing is i think i can just run in any shoe without any issues so maybe i'm not the best person to be reviewing these shoes because i don't always find the issues but i will try to point them out the best i can narrow toe box do not get this if you do not want a narrow toe box i've had a few friends switch from the more v5 to the hurricane 24 and they are much happier this can cause some blistering charlie got blisters and some other people got blisters as well so don't get this if you don't want any well do not get this if you have slightly wider feet now sitting on top of the box here we have the skyward x because this is hoka's modernization taken to the extreme of the line so thinking about the cliftons and the bondis of the world low tech this is the most high tech training shoe on the market it has more foam than nearly any other shoe it has the carbon fiber plate it has two different types of foams it has the race foam with the training foam there's nothing else really like it on the market their shoes neo vista super blast none of them do exactly what this shoe does and none of them for me have the same joy and bounce that i get out of the skyward x so i'm hoping in the sky flow we get a similar vibe shoe i try to you guys know i try to avoid reading most things and watching anything on these shoes before i run in them i've heard some mixed things i think i've just seen things pop up so we'll see we'll see i have mixed in my head i'm not expecting it to be a massive banger and i'm not expecting it to be a complete dud i think one of the reviewers i was on the trip with said it was okay so with that guys let us bada boom bada bang let's see how it stacks up if it can be in between these two shoes a little bit of bounce good comfort in some versatility for a little bit of pace pickup, that will be a winner. That'll be a winner. Hey, look at that fall bokeh. Out here with the Christian girl autumn. Bang. Bro, what you know about that Christian girl autumn? Look at the way the sun is. Oh. Out here talking about Christian girl autumn can barely use a tripod. It's getting disrespectful. All right, we have, bada boom, two shoe boxes in here. We have to see which one is which. All right, here we go. Skyflow, man, I didn't, I didn't see the color until I just looked on the side of the box. So let's pretend I didn't see the color. Maybe the color on the side of the box isn't, isn't the actual color. Man, I might have to go to Mecklenburg Community College and take a course in videography. It's just kind of disrespectful here. I cannot even use the camera. All right, ready? Is the Hoka Skyflow going to be certified dad drip? Let us find out. Bada boo! Bada bang! Man! Man! Pull up in the running is bad for your knees 5000s, bro. Pull up in the where's my arthritis medication 3700. Man, man, bada bang! Pull up in the you can't even tell these are dentures. 25s gosh darn bro looking real crispy pull up in the hold my nine iron while i grab my wood 38 <laughs> oh my gosh pull up on the sipping johnny walker blues with the camilo y cabela cigar in my mouth man gosh darn oh man these are looking crispy dog Pull up in the hit me one more time, dealer. 98. Whew. Man, look, looking real crispy. All right, man. Hoka Skyflow. It, it looks like a swaggy dad shoe. But if you are a dad from 2014, from Mawa, New Jersey, who vacations in the Poconos, makes $173 per year, sends your two kids to Bergen Catholic School, orders pizza every Friday from Vinnie D's, drives a Cadillac, not, not the new one. He has a Cadillac sedan from back in the day. That's how he met your mom. And he just looking for something comfortable to ease up on the arthritis. When really, he should probably lay off the red meat. But that's not here nor there. The Johnny Walker is not going anywhere. He just got himself a pair 
of the Hoka Skyflow. So certified dad drip, yes, for sure. Pull up like I'm from the mid-Atlantic. These are looking clean, looking crispy. The white with the gold in that dark blue. Man, this is this is a good-looking shoe. This is a good-looking shoe for sure. Now, midsole foam here, it is the super critical EVA from the Hoka Mach 6 and from the Hoka Skyward X over here. And so a lot of people... A lot of people are saying this is a taller version of the Hoka Mach 6. I've also heard, and I'm telling you, I try to avoid most things. I think someone told me about this shoe in store or was giving me, sometimes I'll go into the the running stores and they'll just tell me now if they know who I am, they'll just tell me what they think of shoes, which is great because I love to talk about the shoes, but I'm like, dang, I didn't run the shoe yet. Now it's in my head. So I think when I was at one of the running stores, they told me it's a little bit firmer than the Mach 6, which would make sense because there's more foam here, more stack. You can't really put a ton of soft foam in a shoe like this, but it does still feel like it has some nice pep and bounce back. So the difference between a shoe like the Skyflow and the Clifton 9 here is the foam just feels a lot bouncier in the Skyflow. I can tell it's a different foam pushing it in. It feels different density. It feels like it's going to have a little bit more pep. It also does feel softer here. And look at this. We have a nice, ooh, man, yes. We have a nice rocker. And this is one of the things that Hoka Low Key is probably the best in the game at making these smooth rockers. And Saucony gets the credit for it with the endorphin speed shoes because they decided to call it speed what do they call it the speed roll technology hoka has not done that yet they call it the early stage meta rocker and look look at that early stage meta rocker brother man you ain't never seen an early stage meta rocker popping off like that man if i pull up to the function in the white sky flow with that gold hoka logo i would hear looking like i'm commemorating the 25th anniversary of a master's win Bro, shooting two under par in the sky flow. Bang! I'm going to mess around retire right now. Go take my neighbor's golf cart over to the Pine Lake Country Club and get some shots in. Working on my stroke. Man, drop a bomb on that sky flow. I pull up like I'm Phil Mickelson. You don't even know. Out here like I'm Rory McIlroy. All right, upper of the Skyflow. Let's take a look. So I told you, comfort, bounce, versatility. Looks like the comfort is going to be there for sure. Really similar fit to the Clifton here. It actually looks like the toe box might be a touch narrower. We got a lot of nice padding on the tongue. And then this is, you guys already know. You guys already know. Megan the Stacklian out here. We like to see, do they have those nice wide bases? Decently wide. It's actually similar width as the Clifton here. Let's take a look versus one of the softest and bounciest, not softest, but one of the bounciest Max Cushion shoes, Hurricane 24. And you can see, man, this is Hoka's design language on the Skyflow. I'm messing around with the colorway here. I think the shoe looks nice, but if you look at, and why do they do that? Just the Y is white for Joanna. Skirt! <laughs> It's the ski flow. <laughs> so you think the person who designed this, if I ever listened to Sexy Red? Okay, this is Hoka's design language here with these the ribs, the ribbed midsole. And this is what I was telling you guys. Sakini pulled up with the Hoka Kane 24, completely jacking the swag. But the thing is, $160, $160. In the Hoka Kane 24, they do have that power run PB. It's a little bit firmer than the actual race foam, but it gives a lot of bounce. I was able to put up a 12 miler at a decent clip in the Hoka cane. So that's what Hoka is going up against right now. You have shoes that are stealing your technology, really stealing your technology and offering a little bit more than the previous versions had. And when I'm saying previous version of the Skyflow, I mean the Bandai. So Hurricane is had the Bandai in its scopes and does it a little bit better, at least on paper. I still need to try the Bandai. Skyflow, hopefully, is competitive with the Hurricane. So, good stability there. Let's take a look versus the Bruscos Mass. And again, oh man, this guy needs to get cleaned up. That's the problem with the all-white shoes. Man, the Ghost Max is so white that it's almost blue. Look at it in comparison to the Skyflow. 
the sky flow is, is normal white. <laughs> the, the ghost max is, is blue white. But similar widths here, ghost max has good stability. The first version of the ghost max was my favorite walking shoe. And let's get this one out here. It's just distracting. Pull up in the Starburst 89s. What was I saying? The first version of the Ghost Max is the most comfortable walking shoe out there still. Still my favorite walking shoe with everything else that I've tried this year. I'm still pulling for the Ghost Max. That I had it on my I was doing errands Saturday. I told you my Jeep battery died. I had to go to Meineke. I had to go pick up firewood because Charlie decided to sign me up for making a fire. I said, okay, yeah, of course, honey. Oh, you want me to do a fire for the for the neighbor? That sounds great. That that sounds delightful, honey. So I had the Ghost Max on, doing all the errands, picking up firewood from Lowe's, etc. Great shoe. Ghost Max Two firmed it up a little bit, and this is what we're talking about when we think about Clifton and Skyflow, or pretend this is the Bandai and Skyflow. You go from a more standard foam, maybe touch outdated technology to something new maybe bouncier softer the properties of what makes that shoe great or what make, made that shoe great in the past might change a little bit in the case of the in the case of the ghost max the first version was better for walking the second version is better for running it has more bounce to it i do not like the first version for running but it's 120 dollars now on sale if you need a walking shoe if you're a post officer like my guy Jendrick out in Germany putting in the work serving the people shout out Angela Merkel if that is your profession Ghost Max one great shoe now let's do a little bit of a comparison with the more V5 Ugh. all right side to side here and you can see the more V5 this thing's just an absolute tank absolute tank so the secret sauce of the Morvi 5, the foam compound is great, but New Balance also wraps up this foam around the sides of the foot. That's actually what can cause some of the blistering because there's so much foam up here and they wrap it so much. That creates some weird fit for some people up in the front of the Morvi 5. Awesome shoe. I don't wear it for casual a lot. I love it as a recovery shoe. It's okay for casual, but it can get soft in the back too. The other thing about the Morvi 5, opposite of the boston 12 with the boston 12 i would tell people if you're not putting a lot of power down if you are light on your feet do not get this shoe if you are running slowly do not get this shoe more v5 if you want something to run fast in do not get the shoe and if you consider yourself a bigger runner do not get this shoe i am on the borderline with it where it still works for me but any any bigger than I am, if you're putting a lot of power down, you will bottom out this shoe and you will want to get either the Hurricane or the Brusco's Mass too. Disclaimer, disclaimer, disclaimer. And people always add the disclaimers about who they got the shoe from. I need to add the disclaimer so they're not all up in the comments talking about you led me astray. Bro, just get the miles in. I don't even care what shoe you have. Okay, Skyflow, a little bit narrower than the more V5. I'm actually optimistic that this is not going to come in at a super heavy weight. It feels light. Man, pull up like I'm going to watch some live comedy in Las Vegas. Bang. Man, pull up like I vacation on Hilton Head. Bang. All right, Hoka Skyflow coming in at 306 grams. I told you, brothers, 306 grams, I told you. I knew this was going to be lightweight. Just just watch how chunky all these other boys are. Saucony Hurricane 24. Pull up with the little 341.5. I was going to make a pun with the 41. Who's that, Alvin Kamara? I don't even know any 41s. 341.5, that's a thick boy. Brooks Ghost Max 2, 327. New Balance Moore V5, 337.5 grams. Now, here's the thing about the Skyflow and how I'm contextualizing it and where it also might fit versus some other shoes. So you also could say, maybe this goes up against the 1080, maybe this goes up against the Vomero, and maybe the Bandai goes up against these shoes, but the Bandai isn't a legit, I'm not going to say it's not a legit running shoe, but it's not considered. If you go into a running store and you tell them you want a max cushion shoe, 
for putting down some miles. The Bandai isn't the one that they're going to give you. They're going to give you probably one of these these other shoes. So this is a little bit more competitive now with the rest of the market. Decently lightweight, 300 grams. That's solid for a daily trainer. Hopefully, hopefully it gives us some comfort and balance because that means with the lighter weight, that means it probably should be a little bit more versatile. But look at this. Look at this. Hoka Skyward X. 300 and 34 grams and that's because of the ridiculous amount of stack you get in the skyward deck so comparing these two shoes man i thought that was ups i thought that was ups coming in from an early morning drop off it's just min hill public schools put some respect on the education of our children all right look at these two you get a lot more foam in the skyward x let's get the right angle on these I don't know if you, yeah, you can tell from this side, you get more foam in the heel of the Skyward X. Skyward X also has the two different foams. So similar type of foam, if not the same exact foam as the Supercritical EVA in the Skyflow with the race foam on top in the carbon fiber plate. The Skyflow is 100% of that Supercritical EVA. So decently lightweight. You got a good amount of stack. You have that early stage meta rocker. I think we should get this guy on foot. See if this puppy could really go four under par. Oh, hold on, man. QA check. All right. Left shoe. The first one was what? 305. Left shoe. Pull up in the Michelob Ultra 3s. Looking real smooth. Looking real low calorie out here. Bang. All right. I'm, make, I'm making a lot of jokes about the colorway. I think it's the gold. Whenever a colorway has gold, it just sends me, as they say. It just sends me. All right. Lacing up the sky flow. This upper feels extremely similar to the Clifton. It has that same structured feeling. It, it seems like they use the same material. It's not a super lightweight performance upper. And it is a little bit narrow in the toe box, a little bit narrower than I thought, but let's actually get the Clifton on. I wanna do this side by side here just to see how these two foams feel underfoot. And so length, by the way, fit, length is good on the Skyflow. It does fit true to size. I don't know if it's because the Clifton is a little bit more broken in. I haven't worn this a ton. I wore it on one run and then a few times walking, but the Clifton upper feels a touch more comfortable and just less, less tight. Maybe it's the break in, but it does feel a little bit more comfortable. But yeah, I want to see how these foams feel. And I was going to say underfoot, the Skyflow doesn't have a super soft squish. Almost feels like the Clifton, at least on the step in, is a little bit softer. But let's see how they do walking. All right, man. Walk test in the Honey, I just put my $5,000 bonus in the trip to Aruba fund 17s. Man, Clifton feels softer and smoother just on this walk test. I am surprised at how not soft the Skyflow feels underfoot. And again, I do have some use on the Clifton. But as you can see, it looks pretty new. I've probably worn it, I don't know, five times. But yeah, it feels, look at this. I don't know if you can see me trying to squish him, but the Clifton definitely feels softer and squishier. It also feels like it has a little bit more of a narrow or a little bit of a wider toe box than the Skyflow. The Skyflow is noticeably narrow. I think narrower even than the Skyward X, which is interesting. It has this hot dog feel. Pull up in the, I just got tickets to the Sox game, 26s. Pull up in the Mac Jones, more like Sack Jones, 
Tens. All right, let's let's do a little jog test between these two. Man, you already know this jog test is brought to you by Supwell Running. Check out the Supwell app. It's the best place to buy, sell, and trade new and used running shoes, and it's also the best place to connect with other hobby joggers to up your best and get more from your running. We have lots of great shoes on the Supwell app, which I will highlight later in this video. But this jog test, we are going to be doing a little head-to-head. -head. Skyflow versus Clifton. I am gonna order a new tripod. This is getting disrespectful out here, but I just killed an ant on it. By the way, good rubber coverage. It has good rubber coverage, but the toe box is feeling really narrow on my left side. I can get a little bit of that that rubbing sometimes, but man, I ran 27 miles in the the streak fly yesterday. I ran in the Pegasus Plus twice. Nike's known to have narrow toe boxes. No issues. This thing is really narrow. This might be one of the narrowest toe boxes I've tried, at least. So for me, where I look for that is right here. This is the, the tension point that I have right between or at the widest part of my foot, right where the toes connect to the meat. The pig hockles right there. The toe knuckles. I'm getting a lot of pinching. And the other thing is with these two shoes on, Feeling a little bit like a Chevy Equinox, not the Chevy Stacco right now. With these two shoes, the Clifton, it felt softer, it felt smoother out there. And if you told me that I had the Clifton on my left foot and the Skyflow on my right, I, I might believe you. So the thing is, I told you, this has some use on it. Maybe that's the reason why it's feeling a little bit softer. Maybe this is gonna need some break in. But I'm telling you right now, it's not feeling like the Mach 6. It's not feeling like the Skyward X, but let's see. Let's go for a run. Maybe we'll open up, plan for this run, a little eight to 10 miler. We've had a lot of miles on the past few days, so just going out for some comfort cruising. And this is the type of run that the Skyflow should excel at. So let's go lace it up. Here's what I'm hoping out of the sky flow. Maybe a little bit more of a rockered, maybe even bouncier Nova Blast. Is that too much to ask for? I don't know. I don't know. But I don't think it's gonna be, it's not gonna be giving us the same squish as the more V5. It's not gonna be giving us that same crazy bounce as the Hurricane. but we'll have to see. So on the right side here, my right foot is a little bit smaller, lower volume than my left, and it does feel a touch better, the fit. It, it just, it, it is a more constraining upper. It is a lower volume upper. I'm sure they'll make this in wide, but that's just something to note. All right, one hour in the sky flow. Let's do it.
Oh man, another beautiful morning. Look at this. Blue skies, sub 70 degree American temperatures. What more could you ask for? Max cushion gang shoe on our foot. Looking like we're about to go for a smooth little nine hole. I love it. All right, early overreaction of the sky flow here. Super smooth. This is super smooth. It's not the softest, it's not the bounciest, but it might be the smoothest. And that's what Hoka is great at, these rockers. And as I'm getting going here, it feels a lot better than it did up there against the Clifton. And it's feeling a little bit like a bouncier Clifton. So I do think it's gonna take some time for the shoe to open up, for the foam to break in. But because it isn't the softest, I think we're gonna get that versatility box checked. Toe box is still narrow on the left side. I am wearing a little bit of thicker socks. Uh, socks though, I almost said socks. I think it's because I said boxes. So it could be the thicker socks, but decent amount of bounce. The rocker is great. The temperatures are mild. The Volkswagen Beetles are yellow. It's a beautiful morning. Dogs are barking. The moms are walking. It's a beautiful morning. All right, first straightaway here. My legs are definitely feeling tired from 18 yesterday and 27 Sunday. Today is a recovery day. No, no fast pace at all. Just nice and relaxed. We'll see how this Max Cushion Cruiser does for a cruise. in the Clifton's. Let's go. All right, I was zoning out, which I guess is a good thing. Mile one was 7.53. Nice recovery pace. And still the rocker. The rocker is what's shining right now. Nice rocker. Toe off is great. The foam not too soft, not too firm. I'm really feeling like this one is gonna break in with some miles. So here's what I've figured out recently. After the long run, the next day for me, I can steal some fitness. What I mean by that is the soreness and fatigue is not gonna set in right after. It usually takes about two days, so that's today. And I'm feeling the fatigue from the 27 miler. But yesterday, 
I was able to steal some fitness by putting up two more hours of aerobic mileage, 18 more miles. This isn't something that I discovered, by the way. I was reminded of it recently, though, by Coach Rubio from Running Warehouse. But once we've built up strength, we can go back to back, bigger mileage days, get more of an aerobic stimulus, and then do a recovery day on the third day. It's all about the mileage, baby. Somebody asked me if I trained, considered training by time last week. And I took that personally. It's all about the mileage. Out here talking about run for an hour. Run for an hour. What am I gonna do? Stop right by the Waste Pro trash can and walk the rest of the way home? Come on for an hour. Get your mileage up. It's all about the miles, the kilometers, the meters. It's hilarious because I literally said before we left, I'm gonna go run for an hour in the sky flow. <laughs> so yeah, I naturally do run by time as well as miles. I know that eight to 10 miles is gonna take me roughly an hour to an hour 15. So it's the same thing, but running by miles just means I know my routes, my routes, my ruetes, la via. So I can go eight, know exactly where the start and stop is. Whatever system is gonna get you out there consistently, motivate you to up your best, that's the best one. For me, it's miles. Also, it'd just be weird to, to compare. I ran three hours and 43 minutes last week, and this week I ran three hours and 58 minutes. I think miles is just a simpler way for me to do it. All right, that was mile two. We are exactly Let's see, 15 minutes and 51 seconds, 54 seconds. That was another 750 pace mile. This shoe is solid. Feels like a higher stacked Clifton with maybe a little bit more bounce. It's a Hoka, it's a Hoka. That's a Ford F-150 King Stack Edition. Look at that thing, beast. Toyota Stack 4. Honda CR Stack. And Stack Pro putting in work. The United States of Stack. I'm gonna have to run up the bag, drop it off at Goldman Stacks. The accountant's running up the numbers at JP Stacking. Morgan Stackley, Stack of America. You must be looking for some stack. Look at him go, trying to bust the stack. Might have to go bust some miles down on the Pine Lake Country Club. Turn it to the Pine Lake Stack Club. Bang, this ain't Mint Hill anymore. This is Stack Hill. Stack Hill, let's go. And big body, <laughs> that big body infinity. The Q Stack 80, let's go. And talking about Elk Ridge. Look at that RV, that's not Elk Ridge, that's Elk Stack. Bang. F2 stacky, super stack. That ain't a tractor, it's a stactor. All right, we're about four miles in. And that's what I was saying earlier. Whenever I have an issue with the shoe's fit, like the narrowness of the toe box, it generally just goes away as I'm running. The, you guys know the princess and the pea? I'm like the opposite of that. It's really hard for me to be derailed by discomfort in a shoe. 
And I think if we just let ourselves flow into the run, most of the times those things go away, unless it's legit pain. So it's definitely a little bit narrow, but not bothering me now that I'm 30 minutes in. And yeah, mid run update here. This is solid. Hoka stack flow. This is a solid shoe. Some good bounce, some good roll. I do think it's gonna open up a little bit still. Not as soft as the Mach 6. It feels more standard EVA-ish than the Mach 6 for sure. But definitely more forefoot bounce than the Clefton, which is good. Sir Sal, come get in with me. Stack Hill, let's go. Bro, it's getting hot. It is getting hot. I thought summer was over, and then the sun goddess said, no, no, my mind, 92, 92, I have 92. Is that how the sun goddess talks? Like chief, chief? Bye. Bye. It's a Barefoot Mafia certified whip right there. Oh man, they're out here heavy this morning. They're out here heavy patrolling in the Mini Coopers and the Hyundai Velasters, staking out. But one thing, I'd be fresh as hell if the Mafia watching. <laughs> the Hoka Stack Flow has this real loquacious this morning. This is how I knew another shoe is solid. If I'm just popping off incessant nonsense, it's a good shoe. It's a good shoe. I think this gold colorway is growing on me. We might have to call it the golden rule. If you don't have anything nice to stack, don't stack anything at all. And a lot of these boys ain't got nothing to stack. I actually don't think that's the golden rule, isn't it? Treat others how you want to be treated. That's another good one, but we just rewrote the golden rule. We just rewrote the golden rule. Man, little boys want to flex about what they were doing in 2019. What are you doing now? What kind of work are you putting in today? In 2024? And want to talk about 2019? You know what I was doing in 2019? Figuring out how to become a father for the first time. At 23 years old, manning up. Little boys want to talk about what they were running in in 2019. Man. What kind of work you putting in today? We're getting out here every day, getting active, up in our best. Don't talk to me about 2019. We'll see, we'll see who's really out here in 2029. Stacking millimeters, staying on that grind. Might mess around and have seven offspring by then. Real prolific. We just crested a huge hill. And these shoes are opening up even more. And my mouth is opening up even more. And let me tell you, there's nothing like a thick slab of perfectly contoured ethylene vinyl acetate to just get me popping off. Popping off. Oh, let's talk about 2019. 2019. 2019? 2019? You're talking about 2019? Uh-uh. Uh-uh. What are you doing today, my brother? All right, that was mile seven. 712 pace. What I say, comfort, bounce, versatility. What I was looking for, it's all there. It's all there. This is a workhorse stack machine. This thing is beast. It's not as exciting as the Skyward X, but it, 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 it has us grinding out the elevation, chewing up the road. It's a solid shoe. This is a grinder type shoe, like the Ghost Max 2. A little bit softer, 
a little bit better rocker a little bit cooler brand but similar shoe if you found the ghost max 2 a touch too firm this might be him the hocus stack flow it might be him Man, talk about putting up 100 mile weeks in 2019 i was trying to keep it 100 for my family trying to put up 100 percent of rent every month grinding trying to be 100 percent of a man in 2019 little boys want to be out here capping about how many miles they're putting up in some low stack shoes man put up 100 mile weeks in 2024 and then we can talk don't be flexing about what he did in 2019 the gall the gall man little boys out here talking about the lord's year of 2019 and what they were doing i was trying to figure out how to quit a nicotine addiction to better myself become a better man little boys flexing about the footwear they had on in 2019 we were making life choices in 2019 it's the type of stuff that gets under my skin, man. And don't, don't come up here with that old head energy talking about what you were doing back in the day. Because it's a new time. And here's the thing, there's some people, it's not about when you were born. It's not about how old you are. It's about your mentality. If you're looking five years in the past, think about what you did back then. No. What are we doing today? What are we doing tomorrow? How are we getting better? What kind of work are we putting in? How are we gonna sweat out our DNA on the streets today so we can come out tomorrow and beat that? That's what I'm thinking about. I'm not thinking about what kind of shoes I was wearing in 2019. Two thousand and nineteen to move my family from New York to Charlotte to put myself in a better environment so I could win so I could take myself out of a bad environment 2019 2019 All right, mile eight, 652. Putting in the work today, man. This is what the hobby jogger lifestyle is about. If you ever been told you're not good enough because you haven't been doing it long enough, you don't fit in, you don't have the right gear, you don't talk the right way, Man, get in with me. Let's go. I already told you, we're kicking down the doors. These gatekeepers, there's no gate anymore because we busted that open. Talking about 2019. We broke the doors down and it's 2024. And we're here to stay. Man, if you ever been in a dark place, If you've ever been fighting just to see tomorrow, if you don't know what it looks like a month from now, and you're just doing all you can to hold it together, that's what the hobby jogger lifestyle is about. Fighting to become better today. Putting in the work today so we can win tomorrow. Not thinking about no damn 2019. I'm gonna talk to you about 2019. We are trying to get it out the mud, trying to figure out how to get unstuck. 10 miles, 719 pace, 1 hour, 13 minutes, 52 seconds. Hoka stack flow, man. <laughs> Bang. <laughs> this thing is fire. This thing is fire. It's got, it's like the Brooks Hyperion 2, man. <laughs> the Brooks Hyperion Max. The Alpha Fly. It's just, 
unlocked demon time. <laughs> I had to go beast mode on them out here talking about what they did in the Lord's year, 2019. Comfort, bounce, versatility, it's all there. It's all there. It looks like the type of shoe that we might wear when we go ahead and quit running and start Supwell Golf. But man, that's a tiger if I've ever seen one. Wasn't 2019 the last year that Tiger won the Masters? What? The sun is it's exactly in the wrong spot. And this is the thing, you could say, maybe you should get an indoor filming setup or go to the backyard. I like coming down, down to the street. I just like it, it's open. This podium is the exact height serendipitously we bought a house where the podium is the exact right it's not even a podium it's the the mailbox and if you look at the other mailboxes on the street some of them are the plastic ones some of them are the more traditional jesus the cross and then you have the black box there's two others that are podium style but we have the tallest most robust mailbox on the street or should I say stack box at Hoka Skyflow 1 I almost said Skyflow 25 I, I have no idea why I would say that maybe I was thinking of the Asics Gel Nimbus 25 which was my first softer max cushion shoe that I really liked and is it me or is this I'm telling you man this this tripod has had so many issues that is now just getting in my brain. We got the cicadas out there. It's better than the murder of crows that we had yesterday, but... <sighs> this shoe, compared to a lot of the other Max Cushion shoes that you might think about, Asics Gel Nimbus, New Balance 1080, New Balance More V5, Saucony Hurricane 24, Brooks Ghost Max V1, this isn't in the same category. It's not in the same category. This is more of a protective daily trainer with some balance. Yes, it has the stack, but this lightweight foam, and man, look at this. Can you see that? This lightweight foam is awesome. It has some nice bounce. No, it's not the same compound that's in the Mach 6. I can tell you that right now. It has a little bit of a crunchier feel, almost a tiny bit super blasty, this shoe is. It's not as lightweight, but it gives me some of that super blast feel. What I didn't like with the super blast, it felt that I had to run a certain pace to get the most out of it. I don't feel that in the shoe. So the three things I was looking for, comfort, bounce, versatility. Comfort, 100% there. The, the key issue that I had at first was the narrowness of the toe box. I feel that it's widened up a touch just throughout that hour, hour 10, hour 10 minute run. It is still gonna be a little bit narrow, even narrower than the Clifton and the Skyward X. But as we got out into the run, it's fine. My foot doesn't have any pain. So the comfort is there. Also the stack is nice and protective. This is a great training foam. This is an awesome training foam. And when we think about training foams versus racing foams, I don't need every shoe to be a Saucony Endorphin Pro 4 or an Alpha Fly or even a Skyward X. This has just the right amount of comfort and bounce without being too soft. And we ended that run. Let's throw it up here. We ended that run at a 640, 630 pace. So nice progression, started off at a 750, got increasingly more agitated as we were thinking about what happened in 2019. And we ended at around a 640 or a 630 pace and the shoe handled it beautifully. So I said comfort, bounce, versatility. Let's talk about that third one, versatility. When I'm looking for a versatile shoe, I want it to be good for shorter runs, good for longer runs, good for faster pace and good for slower pace. A shoe like the Nova Blast 4, which is pretty similar to this on paper when we're thinking about stack height and weight, that's a little bit 
less expensive. It's 140. This is 160. That also has a higher drop. This feels more versatile for me. Nova Blast 4, I would not be finishing runs at a 630 pace in that shoe. This reminds me a lot actually of the Mach 5, more protective, hopefully more durable. And I think that's what Hoga is trying to do with the shoe. I've actually seen in a lot of their marketing materials, they're using the word durable or, or longevity, one of those two words. It was, I think it was comfort and durability that they had in one of their ads for the shoe. So they're engineering the shoe to last longer. That is one of the main complaints runners have had. And I'm saying runners very purposely because a lot of people love the Clifton and the Bandai for walking. Let's see. Yeah, yesterday I was out here <laughs> with the Nikes with something in my teeth. Here's the thing. If you want to drop every day, you can't let you can't let things like that get in the way. And this is people always ask me, let's put the stack flow down for a second. How do you have time to do everything? Because I don't think. I don't think about the thumbnail. You know what the thumbnail is gonna be? Some variant of this. I don't think about the title. You know what the title is gonna be? Hoka Stack Flow First Run Review. If it's an older shoe, I name it. I finally tried the Hoka Stack Flow. I don't think about the format. I don't think about what I'm gonna say. I just say it, I drop it in, linear fashion, no B-roll and go. If you wanna do something and you're looking for where do I find the time, make the time and make it as easy as possible. That's why I didn't invent this, right? You look to the guys like Zuckerberg, Obama, they always talk about wearing the same shirt or wearing the same suit to reduce the number of decisions they need to make. Steve Jobs, throughout the day, just make it easy on yourself to do things. I don't try to come up with creative video titles. I don't script out the videos. I've just found a format, a template. I don't worry about if I have something in my teeth. If I have something in my teeth, Bada boom, bada bang, tomorrow maybe we'll have clean teeth, maybe we won't. Like you can't let those things keep you up at night, man. Let me tell you something about these little, these little boys getting their resting HRV up, worried about a little piece of mushroom in their teeth. They should be more worried about the kind of miles they're putting in. Comfort, bounce, and versatility. Engineered maybe more for durability when thinking about using this as a running shoe versus a walking shoe. So. I am pleasantly surprised at the running capability of the Hoka stack flow here. And when we did that jog up and down the street versus the Clifton, it did not feel great. So this is a shoe that is going to require some break in time, 100%. I can already feel this foam starting to soften up. I think once we get 30 miles in it, it's gonna be beautiful. And I would actually love to see how this does for a long run because it's given me a little bit of super blast vibes, non-plated that almost that hollow, crunchy, lightweight foam feeling with some bounce. And as I was going through the gears, getting down to 640 and 630, I didn't feel like it was maxing out. I felt like it had more bounce to go. So I think I could probably get down to marathon pace in this shoe. The comfort's there, the stability is there, the width is there. You saw it had the same width as some of those other traditional max cushion shoes. And it's coming in 30 to 40 grams lighter, which again is giving me a little bit of that super blast vibe now it's not a race foam as i was saying it's a training foam but from a training foam what i want is comfort support durability decent amount of bounce and this also has a beautiful rocker so that's the other thing saving the shoe i mean look at this boom boom rolling like a like a golf ball down the fairway in augusta bang yeah it's a nice roll to this shoe great bounce and a little bit of a lower drop i think it's six millimeters i don't remember off the top of my head and this thing i don't look at the specs before I review these shoes because I want to just share my experience. I don't want to be thinking too much about the technology, but the technology in here is solid. Let's see how it does with some more miles. But right now I can tell you versus the Hurricane 24, not as bouncy, but a little bit more nimble. I think a little bit more versatile than the Hurricane 24. It had a little bit more get up and go versus the Ghost Max 2, not as firm, which is nice. And versus the more V5, much firmer. So if you did not like that soft squish of the more V5, I do not think this is going to bottom out. The heel, and I know some people had some issues with the heel of the more V5. The heel is just a little bit more substantial, a lot more substantial than this guy, actually. And look at that great rubber coverage too. So overall, I am pleasantly surprised by the stack flow here. And I know I feel like I have to issue 
do not buy orders now because I feel so bad because every time I review a shoe and it's good, people accuse me of making them go broke. So if you have $160, don't, don't buy the stack flow. Put it in your daughter's college fund, okay? Disclaimer, disclaimer, please don't buy this. If you already have the Ghost Max 2, if you already have the Hurricane or the More V5, you don't need this. If you have the Mach 5 and you've beaten it into the ground and are looking for something more comfortable and supportive, you might like this. If you have the Nova Blast 4 and you want something a little bit faster, maybe better for some progression runs, you might like this. If you have the New Balance 1080 and that's getting long in the tooth and you thought, hmm, I wish it were a little bit more versatile, you might like this. I want to do some more testing because I think this could become a one of the best do-it-all shoes of the year, which I was not quite anticipating, but it's got the balance, it's got the comfort, it's got the versatility. It's a solid shoe. It's not a miss. Now, I do, I have heard and I do know that some people, they're just mixed reviews out there. I'm not exactly sure why. I think if you're not putting down as much power into the foam, if you're a lighter on your foot runner, like I was on this jog test right here, right? Just plodding up and down the street and even the first few miles, first two miles didn't feel great. But as I started going through those gears, getting down to 7.30, 7.10, 6.40, it started opening up and becoming a lot better. So I think this is also one of those binary shoes. Bigger runners, more powerful style runners will like this. If you're lighter on your feet, you might prefer the Mach 6 or even the more V5. So another great bigger runner daily. It seems we will do more testing on this shoe soon. Last thing I should say, sign up for the Supple app, please. I want to, I want to show you some of the best shoes available right now. There's, there's some complete bangers. All right, everyone's asking me about EU. Look at this. Can you see that? Can you even see that? All right. EU Mizuno Neo Vista size 10. He, how much money is this? How much money is this? Man, he did not follow the format that I put. I mess around and kick him off the app. This is the thing, these boys add more work, workload to my plate. 80 European. It looks like a C with two lines. Is that 80 euros? He's looking to ship it in the EU. Better if Switzerland. He says he hates them. You might like them. I didn't really like them that much either. All right, $125. My guy, Philip Chu. This is the New Balance 1080 V13. Three miles for $125, including shipping. Even with the V8, V14, 1080 V14 coming out, you're not going to beat that deal. 10.5. Bang. My guy, Philip Chu, just unloading. Absolutely unloading on the app, $185 Saucony Endorphin Elite. Brand new, $185, that's a $275 shoe. Out here like a used salesman putting in work, bro. Out here talking about 2019. We're entrepreneurs in 2024. Little boys talk about 2019. ASICS Metaspeed Sky Paris, men's 11.5. Only three miles, $140. Man, we got the heat, we can keep going. On Cloud Monster, $125. That's an OG right there. A6 Super Blast, size 8, $120. 40 miles, pretty broken in, pretty broken in. Super Blast V1. Good job, Tong Thor. All right, look at that. Another Edge Paris. People are unloading the skies and the edges on the app. Men's 11, 15 miles, $150. If you like the Saucony Endorphin Pro 3 and want something a little bit less fun and faster, there you go, size 11. Saucony Endorphin Speed 2, size 10, $60. Last one, Primex Strung, $100, size 9, 100 miles, pre-broken in light strike. There you go. So sign up for the Supple app if you're looking to buy, sell, or trade gently used or new running shoes. We also have a great community going. I'm posting some exclusive stuff in there, answering questions. You can DM me if you want, or you can just put questions in the training channel. It's a cool app. It's a hobby jogger community. If you're trying to get better, and this is the thing, man. I've had a few people recently tell me that they're not my target demographic, but they like watching the channel. I don't have a target demographic. We have a target psychographic. 
if you have the mindset of wanting to get better every day, it's like my grandmother. It's like my grandmother, man. She still walks 60 miles per week. I might have to mess around and buy her some stack flows. Donna Tilton flexing on him in the Hoka stack flows in Venice, Florida. She'll be the swaggiest one at the bridge table. Bang. If you're out there trying to better yourself every day, not trying to put other people down, not worried about what happened five years ago, looking to bring others along with you, looking to hold hands and move to a better place and get the most out of yourself. That's what this channel is about. It's not about age. It's not about how many miles a week we're putting in. It's not even about running. It's not about running. It's about getting better every day, man. If one day you step up here with some mushrooms in your teeth, you're just gonna do the best job the next day on making sure those teeth are minty fresh. I'll see you tomorrow. Sign up for the Subwell app. Up your best. Shout out to everyone putting in work. All right, one more thing. Here's the refuel. We have the Everything Bagels from Trader Joe's with the vegan chicken patties. A little avocado, homemade honey mustard, not with the chai. Yeah, I mixed the honey and the mustard. What, do we need to raise the bees ourselves and grow the mustard seed? It's like a homemade ice. Homemade ice, yeah. Yeah, shout out to homemade ice. Not not made from the ice machine. Charlie's hating. And then a little arugula on there too. Watch this, a little, little wild arugula. Bang. Out here like emerald. Emerald. Emerald Lagasse, bam. Kick it up a notch. All right, man, one more thing. Afternoon miles in the stack flow. And we've been putting down so many doubles. It's just an expectation at this point. Recovery pace, 754. I feel like I'm the leader of an Alabama-based high school marching band. Ba-boom. These things are looking clean. But as I said this morning, a little bit on the firmer side, the rocker is amazing. It's got some nice pop. Once I start running faster, if you like super soft, this is not it. But for us bigger boys putting down some pace, this is this is a good shoe. More testing coming soon. I don't even have time to take these off on camera. We got to go shower and meet on Zoom. See you later.